Hey traders, welcome to another video on my uh, YouTube channel Equities and uh, today's video is part 3 about financial statements and today we will talk about balance sheets. Quick note, after we are done with the financial statements, the next topic is going to be financial ratios. But before I start with the financial ratios, I thought of having a, a, a dedicated video in which we are going to create financial statements from scratch. We create a company and do some transactions and we'll do together a set of financial statements step by step. I thought this is a good idea. So we'll do this after the next video, which is going to be the cash flow statements. So please subscribe to my channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. I have included my contact details here on the first slide, my uh, uh, Twitter account, my email and my Facebook page if anyone would like to connect with me or send me any questions. I'll, uh, I'll do my best to answer as many questions as possible. Before we move on, let me first get the legal stuff out of the way. Please make sure to read the disclaimer before proceeding. Uh, in brief, I'm not a financial advisor. These videos represent my own understanding and opinion about the topics presented. These are not recommendations of any sort. All the information and data presented are from sources believed to be accurate, but accuracy is not guaranteed. Okay, so with this out of the way, let's get started. We saw this agenda before in the first and second videos about the financial, about financial statements. So we will continue from where we left. We are done with financial statements, income statements, other comprehensive income. These three are done already. And today we will do balance sheet statement and statement of changes in owner's equity because this is uh, this is so much related so i thought of doing these two together so for today we are going to go again quickly over what we meant by accounting standards the ifrs and the gap and we are going to see in details what do we mean by balance sheets why do we need balance sheets and we are going to look at Facebook balance sheet. In, in the last video in the, uh, about the income statement, if you guys remember, we looked at Apple's income statement. So today we look at Facebook balance sheet and I'll end my video as usual with the closing notes. Okay, so what do we mean by accounting standards? I, I mentioned this before, so I'm going to go over it really quickly. Accounting standards are a set of guidelines and rules that companies must follow when preparing their financial statement. Companies follow the standard principles and procedures that define the basis of financial accounting, reporting standards, policies, and practice. The purpose of having accounting standards is to ensure that financial statements from multiple companies are comparable because all entities will follow the same framework of presenting their financial statements. And also by having accounting standards, you could compare Apple to Apple. The purpose of having accounting standards is to make sure that each company will present a minimum set of information or data that are enough for investors and analysts and creditors to be able to establish a good understanding of the company's financial position in general. And last point, accounting standards make the financial statements credible and allow for more economic decisions based on accurate and consistent information. 
Now we mentioned the difference, some differences between GAAP, the generally accepted accounting principle, which is followed in the US, and the IFRS, which is the International Financial Reporting Standards. And we said that there, there are about 120 or 130 countries following the IFRS. When we looked at the income statement, we checked one of the, of the differences, which was how each standard value inventory. Today, we will look at another couple of differences. The first one I'm going to mention here, and the other one will, will, will go over it, uh, in, in, on one of the slides. Both US GAAP and IFRS recognize fixed assets when purchased, but their valuation over time can differ. What, what do I mean by that? US GAAP requires that fixed assets are measured at the initial cost. Their value can decrease, not here, their value can decrease via depreciation, of course, or impairment, but it cannot increase. IFRS leaves this to the company to decide upon how it's going to treat its fixed assets. The reported value can increase or decrease. So let's assume that we have a piece of equipment and for some reason this piece of equipment, uh, its value went up. This kind of appreciation in an asset, you will not see if the company is using GAAP it cannot increase the value of its fixed asset. You understand why, why I, I pointed to this, this difference? Because the value of knowing the differences between GAAP and IFRS is to be able to tell if there would be some discrepancy between figures when a company report using um, this standard or the other standard, because you want to have consistent numbers when it comes to assets or income or liabilities. So it's more reliable figures. You could base your ana analysis on a reliable figure. Okay. So what is a balance sheet? A balance sheet is also known as statement of financial position. It presents a company's assets, liabilities, and equity at a point of time. Pay attention to this word. This is, this is very important. At a point of time, it's in the past. I mentioned the same thing when we first discussed financial statements and income statement. Everything, not everything, almost everything you see in financial statements are in the past. It's already reflected in the press. Your job is to try to analyze these figures and forecast the company's performance in the future. So the balance sheet presents the relationship between assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity. Of course, in this uh, following basic famous accounting equation, assets equal liability plus equity. Ali. And since we are here, because this is going to come uh, after a few slides, equity equal assets minus liability. Okay, just keep this in mind. I know it's, uh, it's in Twitter, but anyhow, just keep this in mind because we are going to come to this uh, short. So what do we have in a balance sheet? Of course, we are going to have assets and assets are defined as resources that a company owns that are expected to generate economic benefits for the company. There are two types of assets, tangible and intangible. This is physical. This could be like a patent, for example. Liabilities are the company's obligations that are expected to result in a decrease in the economic benefits in the future. Assets generate economic benefit. Liabilities reduce this benefit. Owner's equity represents the shareholder's residual remaining 
claim on the company's asset after deducting liability. So this is what I mentioned in the last slide. Owner's equity is assets minus liabilities. U.S. GAAP and IFRS have stated that assets and liabilities should only be recognized on the financial statements if it's probable that the future economic benefits associated with, with them will flow to and from the firm and that the item's cost or value can be measured reliably. And I, uh, as I said earlier, the balance sheet values should not be assumed to be 100% accurate measure of the value of the company because as a simple example, land is usually presented at its historical cost and land is not depreciated. If prices have increased significantly since the date of purchase or acquisition, the value of the asset is understated on the balance sheet. You understand what does this mean? Okay, let's look at the types of assets. In the balance sheet, as we are going to see when we look at Facebook's balance sheet, we have two types of assets, current assets and non-current assets. Current assets are assets that can be liquidated or consumed by the company within one year or one reporting cycle. And as we saw in the income statements, the accounting standards require that certain specific line items must be shown on a balance sheet. As we are going to see cash and cash equivalent, this is this must be present on, on, on the balance sheet. Of course, cash is cash and cash equivalent are highly liquid securities with very minimum risk that it may lose its value or its value might be reduced very minimum risk. Marketable securities, these are also financial assets and include investments in debt and equity securities that are traded on public market. The values on the balance sheet are based on the market price. These are traded on public exchanges so you could get the value from the, the, from the market. Receivables, we are here now. Receivables represent amounts owed to the company by customers to whom sales of goods and services have been made. These amounts are reported at an estimate on the company's expectations regarding collectability because the company cannot assume that it's going to collect 100% of its receivables. About receivables, it's very important to compare between year and year and quarter and quarter the relationship between receivables and the increase or decrease of sales, the value of revenue. This is very important because a significant increase in accounts receivable relative to sales, for instance, may imply that the company is having problems collecting cash from customers. We are going to go into details about this when we discuss financial issues, but let's say that the company made sales for a million dollars and uh, it had an outstanding uh, receivable uh, amount of, let's say this is $1 million sales and it had an outstanding receivable amount of 500,000 and this uh, had been all, uh, always like 50% of the receipt, just for the sake of the example. But today you would find that it has, let's say, 1.3 million receivable. So, so something is wrong here. It should have maybe around 1 million if it followed the same trend or pattern of previous years. But this year there is an increase of 300,000. So this could signal that the company is having problems collecting its receipt. Next, inventories. These are physical stocks held by the company in the form of finished goods, work in progress, or raw material. Again, as we mentioned before, the measurement of inventory differs under IFRS and US GAAP. I'm not going to go into so much detail, but I just want you to know that 
on the IFRS for the inventory you have cost or net realizable value. You will report on the balance sheet the lower of these two figures. And the cost is determined by either, as you remember, IFRS does not allow life, if you remember. So the cost would be determined by FIFO or average cost or um, any other method. Under US GAAP, inventory is reported at lower of cost and market value. And again, cost is determined by here LIFO, FIFO or average cost. So this is another difference in the way the values of inventories are recorded. We use the cost to get uh, the cost of goods sold in the income statement. And then we need to put a figure on the balance sheet. This is how it's determined between US GAAP and IFRS. Finally, other current assets, items that are not material enough to be reported as a separate line item on the balance sheet. These are just collected, aggregated into one single amount and reported as other current assets. This, this could include, for instance, prepaid expense. When a company pays an, ex uh, an expense in advance, this is an asset. Like for example, the rent, if, if it pays rent in advance or if it pays down payment <clears throat> for uh, raw material or some goods and uh, it didn't have 100% of the deliveries. So this is assets. Next, we have non-current assets and these typically include property, plant and equipment investment pro properties, intangible assets. Intangible assets are identifiable non-monetary assets that lack physical substances. It's not physical. And finally, we have goodwill. This is an example of an asset that is not separately and identifiable. You cannot say that here is the asset. It's there, but you cannot identify it. When we look at Facebook balance sheet, you are going to see uh, a huge amount for, for the goodwill, of course, because of the name of, uh, um, of, uh, of Facebook. For example, the value of the reputation or the value of the brand. You cannot recognize it physically, but you know, because this is Facebook, people are advertising on their website. If the name of the website was any other name, if it was equities.com, nobody's going to advertise on equities.com. Next, we have types of liabilities. Again, we have current and non-current liabilities. The current are a company's obligations that are expected to be settled within one year or one operating cycle, the same as we said with the current asset. And these typically include accounts payable. These are amounts owed by the business to its supplier for any purchase that are done on credit. Notes payable. These are financial liabilities from creditors as loans, short-term loans, or loans that are expected to be paid within one operating cycle or one year. Income taxes, these are taxes that have not actually been paid yet. It's a liability. And unearned revenue. This line arises when a company receives cash in advance. You remember when we said about other current assets and we said a company could pay down payment, so this is an asset. It didn't receive the goods that it paid for yet, but it has to be mentioned somewhere on, on its financial statements. Now here is the opposite. The company received cash in advance for goods and services that are still to be delivered. The company is obligated to either provide the goods or services, this is the liability, or return the cash. Okay, non-current liabilities include long-term financial liabilities and deferred tax liabilities. Next, we have the statement of changes in owner's equity. And this includes the total comprehensive income for the period, the effects of any accounting 
changes that have been applied to previous periods, any capital transactions with owners and distribution to owners, all this will affect the owner's equities, of course. And finally, the, the reconciliation of the carrying amount of each component of equity at the beginning and end of the year. As we are going to see when we, when we look at Facebook balance sheet, you would find these uh, under the equity section and we are going to go over it again when we when we go there so why do we have balance sheet why do we look at the balance sheet because we need to analyze a company's financial position we need to know if this company is worth investing in or not one way to analyze a balance sheet is to express it as common size again i mentioned this in the in the income statement video and i will do it again where when we when in, in uh, when we check uh, facebook balance sheet simply a vertical common size balance sheet expresses each balance sheet item as a percentage of total assets when we did the same thing on the income statement we express it as a percentage of the revenue remember and another way to analyze financial statements in general not just balance sheets or income statements is by ratio analysis and this will be covered in details in another video let's look at facebook balance sheet, uh, balance sheet and see what they have the first thing that you look at how the years are presented and here it's from 2019 to the left to 2020 this is very important and another point is the units here it's in millions so for instance the total assets is 133 billion 159 billion let's analyze some figures using a vertical common size balance sheet so what we are going to do is we are going to consider this amount as a hundred percent and this as a hundred percent from years 2019 to 2020 and let's see how much liability facebook has compared to its total asset we'll just divide this figure the total liabilities by the total asset this will give us 24 point let's say two five percent in 2019 and in 2020 19.5 percent so the first information that you are going to get from this balance sheet is owner's equity is the difference between this and that so roughly speaking here the owner's equity is 80.5 percent and here it's let's say 75.75 percent this is a very strong company it has assets don't don't get excited yet because this is this is a huge figure goodwill it's 19 billion but anyhow still facebook is a very strong company of course but when you look at the different lines in the balance sheet you start to analyze the figures so the first thing that we found out is that owner's equity represent 80 percent of the company's total assets which is excellent of course okay let's look at because i know this is not very very visible so i divided each of, of the sections on a separate sheet so it's more visible so here we are <clears throat> As we said before, we'll start by the current assets. And all this is non-current assets. Cash and cash equivalent, Facebook has 17.5 billion in cash, but it had 19 in 2019. So it went down. You remember when we when we looked at income statement when you when you look at any financial statement the purpose is to come up with questions and try to find answers before you come up to a conclusion you need to ask why cash went down it has an increase in market marketable securities from 35 to 44 Account receivables also went up from 9.5 billion 
to 11 billion. Prepaid expenses and current assets. Again, this could be down payments or anything that it's paid and it did not receive um, the goods or the services for what it paid. It's um, 2.3 billion. So the total current assets, it went up from 66 billion to 75.6 billion, 66.2, because this is in billion, this is huge amounts. Equity investments, there is a huge jump from 86 million to 6.2 billion in 2020. Probably this was an acquisition or something. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't remember. But probably this was an acquisition. Property plant and equipment, PP and E. This is called P, P and E. It went up from 35 to 45. Operating lease, it's about the same. Intangible assets, compared to the numbers in billions, more or less. Now, this is what I'm trying to, to reach. This is Goodwill. Goodwill for Facebook, it presents, if we divide the 19 billion over the 159, and the 18 billion over the 133, let me change the color. First thing, we see that there was an increase in the goodwill between 2019 and 2020. This is about 2% increase. But more importantly, how much is goodwill represent from the total assets? This is, this is a very big amount. This is about 12%. If you divide 19 by 159, 19 billion over 159 billion, that's about 12%. But of course, because goodwill, it depends on, as I said, reputation and the brand. And Facebook is a huge brand. So this is understandable, but if Facebook goes into any kind of problems, may God forbid, this amount is gone. This amount will disappear. It's not tangible. This is intangible. In addition to this 623 million, this is $19 billion. Okay. We'll do the same thing for the liabilities. We have also the current liabilities, accounts payable. This is money Facebook owes to its suppliers. Partners payable. Again, money its partners owes to suppliers. Operating lease, accrued expense and other current liabilities, deferred revenue and deposits, and you get a final line for the total current liabilities and the total liabilities. This is very straightforward. There's nothing complicated. Uh, I've seen some um, uh, balance sheets that are extremely complicated. Sometimes companies will try to complicate its financial statements if it wants to hide something. So it will not be straightforward. But of course, for all the, the, the big companies, uh, this is not the case. Finally, we look at the equity and the components of the equity section. This is paid in capital in the form of stocks that are sold to the public or to other investors. It went from 45 billion in 2019 to 50 billion. And other comprehensive income, you remember OCI, from a loss of half a billion to a profit of 1 billion. And retained earnings. What's retained earnings? Retained earnings is the portion of the company's earnings that it didn't distribute to its shareholders. This is also known as the retention ratio. The amount that's paid to shareholders in the form of dividends, for instance, is called the payout ratio. Payout ratio. So retained earnings is one minus payout ratio. Let me give you a quick example, just so you know. Let's say that a company's net income is $1 million. 
and the company distributed 400,000 to its shareholders, dividends, any form of dividends. So it's retained earnings, it's 1 million minus 400k, okay? So this is the final equity, and as we said, this is about 80% of the assets, and this is about 70% of the assets. And of course, this has to balance. You remember, in the beginning, we said that assets equal liability plus equity. If you add this equity and liability here, total liability, this should sum to 159.316. Okay, finally, we'll do the closing notes. Again, looking at the company's balance sheet should reveal the liquidity and the solvency of the company, as we are going to see this when I present financial issues. Checking the company's balance sheet before taking a trading decision, investing decision, it's an avoidable step. You must do it. You must know the company's strengths and weaknesses, how much debt it has, and how much this debt represents from the owner's equity. Imagine if a company, if a company's equity is, let's say, one million dollars, and this is equity, and liability is ten million. And you could have equity negative, by the way. As, as you may have noticed, I didn't dig any deeper into, into these, uh, into balance sheets and, and, um, income statements. I'm just introducing you to the subject because, as I said before, the purpose of this channel to help you become a better trader, to take a more sound decisions, not to become an accountant. So if, if you need to learn more, I'm sure there are maybe 1 million books and resources on YouTube that could help you become an accountant, but this is not the purpose of this channel. How liquid are the assets? If a company goes bankrupt, these assets are going to be sold and paid to the shareholders. If it's if these assets are illiquid, and let's assume that it's valued at any amount, one million dollars, but it's illiquid, maybe to sell them, you could only get 500,000, okay? You can get tons of information just by looking at the balance sheet without doing sophisticated or complicated analysis of, of the figures. What I do is I open the income statement, I look at revenues between uh, consecutive years, I look at the, uh, the, the, the gross profit margin, I, t I try to value the profitability of the company. And then when I open a balance sheet, I compare <clears throat> the liabilities and the equities to the company's assets. I want to know that this company is solid. It could cover its liabilities easily. It's not going to struggle. It has a lot of current assets. If something bad happens, it could survive. Again, a quick reminder, these are at a point of time. All these are history. Luckily, big companies report quarterly, but others only annually. So I would be very cautious when I'm investing in a company that reported financial statements annually, because a lot of things could happen in one year. Okay, finally, as I always say at the end of my videos, Let's all trade like a pro. Thank you everyone and have a great day.